man. Right. I think you're taking the green one. to call the Tuesday, October 19th County Board of Commissioners meeting to order, if I could please, with the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation led by Tony Bear. Father, bless us as we gather today. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for America, greatest country in the world. Uh, we got to some decisions to make tonight. Be with us tonight and guide us and help us make good, citizen, good decisions that will properly represent our citizens. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Baer? Present. Commissioner Walls? Present. Commissioner Kennedy? Present. Commissioner Duckham? Here. Commissioner Pileski? Here. Commissioner Mahoney? Good evening, present. Good evening. Commissioner Williams? Present. Commissioner Snell? Here. Chairman Shetwell? Present. All present. Entertain a motion for approval of the agenda? So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Duckham and support from Commissioner Williams. Any corrections, deletions, or additions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Duly carried. We have no awards and recognition. Communications and petitions, this is the opportunity to present them to the clerk. I understood. I'm, that's why I'm waiting, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Prompter? Yes. If you'd like to bring forward what you'd like the clerk to have, that would be the time to do it. The young lady with the hand out. Sorry. I apologize. I didn't realize that you were. That's okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Any other petitions or communications? Seeing none, we have no special orders or public hearings. We have the opportunity for public comment. This is the public comment guidelines. Each individual will state their name and have three minutes to address the board. You may only address the board once under the public this public comment opportunity. It may not yield your time to others. Board members will not debate or answer questions at this time. First chance for public comment. Wrong mic. Uh, my name is Nathaniel Mulvihill. I've been a resident of Jackson County most of my life, property owner for a significant portion of that. Uh, before I walked in the door today, I took a look at the pictures outside, and uh, I'd say most of you could do with a fresh picture. Uh, to be honest, you all look a lot better in real life than you do in your pictures. A couple of you lost a couple pounds. Uh, anyhow, um, I know you're not supposed to answer questions, but you can each think about this. Um, I am not a constitutional lawyer. Are any of you constitutional lawyers? Probably not, I'm going to guess. Um, with that in mind, uh, I think one of the last public pro proclamations you made regarding public comment was in error. Uh, <clears throat> not regarding public comment, sorry, regarding constitutionality with the, uh, uh, the pro proclamation of us as a sanctuary city. 
uh, at that meeting I, I attended I saw a lot of a lot a lot of people speaking against uh, out for that I realized after I had spoken that a lot of those people were not from Jackson County a lot a lot of those people that spoke out in favor of making Jackson sanctuary County were not residents of Jackson County uh, so I would like you to think tonight about all the people that speak to you and think about how many of those people are transplants that are here to speak out to be loud that do not reside in Jackson County I proud resident since I was eight years old Jackson County thank you for your time hello my name is Kim Mulvihill from Jackson County married to that fellow <laughs> um, so I am against the man the anti-mask anti-vaccine mandate that you all are proposing for tonight um, I work in COVID I've absolutely been exposed to COVID I've been exposed to COVID many many times over this last year and a half most recently a week and a half ago we had an outbreak because an, an anti-masker anti-vaxxer relative came to visit his loved one who has since died because he gave COVID to her he refused to follow our guidelines he refused to follow the masking guidelines he refused to tell us that he was sick when he was coming in and he spread it throughout our facility COVID has been devastating to the healthcare workers it has been horrendous um, when we had COVID come into our facility for the second time the staff was devastated it has broken our hearts and our spirits it has been terrible as far as mask mandates go and um, vaccine mandates go the federal government is mandating that all health care workers and anybody employed by the federal government have a vaccine it is required they are requiring that every company associated with them that is doing work with the federal government have a vaccine mandate they're doing this because the Delta variant is on the rise again we are having more and more people hospitalized more and more people dying again the only way through this is to vaccinate the only way to prevent it from spreading is to wear masks to wash your hands when we're congregated in groups of people we have to mask and wash your hands to prevent it from spreading all of the major corporations are requiring IBM is requiring vaccine mandates to be employed by their company Walmart is going to be requiring that vaccine mandates to be employed by their company Ford Motor Company is requiring all of their employees to be vaccinated they have the auto union labor has re-implemented mask mandates because it has shown that when people aren't masking it spreads in the workplace and it spreads from person to person to person to person and it causes illness and it causes death and it causes prolonged problems for the people who do survive the respiratory issues that come along with it are again devastating um, please consider science please listen to what the what these specialists know and what they have found it's a real thing hi everyone my name is Brittany Senecal I'm a lifelong Jackson resident and a mother of three concerned over the lack of COVID mitigations in schools I teamed up with other parents and we started a group called Jackson masks we advocate for masks in schools and COVID safety recently we have requested transparency from the Jackson County Health Department and schools with COVID reporting currently we have three schools in Jackson County that do not have a COVID dashboard so that means if parents are not contacted about a close contact they have no idea what's going on in their schools in regards to COVID um, cases those three schools are East Jackson Springport and Columbia Central two of those schools uh, East Jackson and Springport are on the MDHHS COVID outbreak list Michigan Center Schools has also stopped updating their COVID dashboard just some quick facts about Jackson County we are a high level transmission area our positivity rate is 15 percent 
we have 375 um, cases per 100,000 residents. Last week in Jackson alone, in Jackson County, 554 people tested positive for COVID. Just today, 118 cases were reported. Um, also today, the Torrent Center, um, they, for their child, uh, the, for the young ones, the Torrent Center and for adult ed, they are now going remote. This is due to increase in COVID cases and also low staff. So due to not wearing masks and COVID transmission, children are not able to have their right to learn in person. Jackson County has two new outbreaks on the MDHHS website, and we have 20 ongoing outbreaks. Western High School leads with 26 um, students and staff. Also, Napoleon <coughs> High School has 21 students. And I should also add that last week, Springport Elementary also went remote due to high COVID numbers. So again, another district where students are missing out on in-person learning. Um, and the cumulative cases for Western schools are 99. So 99 students and staff have now been sick with COVID at Western schools since the beginning of the year. Very high numbers <coughs> compared to last year. I am against the proposed resolution to ban mandated masks, vaccines, contact, contact tracing, and other things. The contact tracing part of this resolution is especially problematic. Eliminating contact tracing is unsafe for our kids, students, and our community. I'm also against banning mandated vaccines. Um, we have vaccines that have been for public schools and smallpox and polio are on that list. This resolution is also unenforceable and unconstitutional, and I really hope that everyone on this time's up, ma'am, can see through that and not vote for it. Good evening. My name is Kelly Bowen. I'm a lifetime Jackson County resident, 47 years. I just want to thank everybody for standing up for our freedom and our rights and our, our ability to be able to choose what we want. We are America. We need to look what's going on in Australia, Canada, and Spain. They are literally ripping people and families apart in these countries. And you think if they mandate that here, they're not going to do that to us. We have to stand up. Let's be Jackson County where this Republic Party was started and stand up and try to take this country back before it's too late. This reminds me of a story that I once heard that says, you won't be able to buy, sell, or trade without the mark. Is that next? I, my husband and my child will not go to school if they mandate masks or vaccines, and we will not go to work if we have to. We will trust in the Lord to take care of our needs. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for standing up for freedoms. Thank you. Terry right. Farley, uh, been here since 89. I uh, live in Clark Lake. I'm doing a little demonstration for all the masking people. I've uh, been a construction worker for 48 years of my life. Um, been involved in OSHA and uh, proper fitting of respirators so that you actually are protected against uh, harmful chemicals and uh, as a painter in construction or in uh, industrial painting as well. And if you didn't have on your respirator and it wasn't set up the right way, now we are talking about deadly situations. So I had a mess respirator. This is a standard 3M uh, M100. <coughs> so when you put this on, you don't just go out and buy one of these when you're in construction. You have to go do, like we've done, cardiopulmonary tests to see if you had lung capacity for it. You also have to have a fitting. They have a uh, like a s aromatic type smell that they'll squirt around it when you're trying to in inhale, like you'll have it closed up. When you put it on, you can pull in on it with your in inhale in it, and it hits a tight seal. You'll hear it <coughs> when it comes off. So if your mask can fit that tight, then when you're inhaling, nothing gets in the mask. You have to be clean shaven, so it works around my mustache, but if I had a beard, um, it wouldn't work. You can't wear beards and have a proper fitting respirator. 
All right, so if you take that same thing and you put it, like here's the filters. Filters, this is a charcoal acclimated filter. So this would be for paint types of things. A lot of people don't know this. I didn't know this for like probably 10 or 15 years I was wearing these things. But uh, once you open this package and you break this seal, this takes 40 hours before it exhausts itself. It's, it's active charcoal. It lasts 40 hours, and then it's done. You have to get new ones. So if you're going to reuse them and reuse them, they won't work. So much time we got? 40 seconds. And then in comparison. So I'm going to work my way down, actually. So this is the next one down. This is a... 30 seconds, sir. How many? 30 seconds. Oh, all right. N95 has an exhaust filter. If you're wearing an exhaust filter, they won't let you go on the, on the airplane with it because they say that you're going to exhaust these fumes or your uh, any kind of germs. But I have to say that if you got this one on, there's no fit test. Oh, air comes in all around it. And if I breathe out, air goes Sir, out. Sir, your time's up. Thank you. Good evening, and uh, I'm here to support the resolution introduced by Mr. I, Baird. I need you to state your name and what Sorry township you're from. My name is Dr. Katherine Upton. I'm a retired physician. I retired last year, actually, because I was so fed up with the politicization of medicine and science. I'm a in, I was a practicing internist and geriatric specialist for about 40 years. My practice entirely consisted of analyzing risk and benefit for each of my individual patients, not a one-size-fit-all approach to every single one of them. COVID vaccines currently are the only product in history where failure of the product is blamed on the people who don't use them. Um, we are trying to follow the science, but I want to urge you to understand the science has changed. The narrative is as follows. In March of 2021, and you can look up the video, Michelle Walensky, head of the CDC, said as follows, vaccinated people do not carry the virus, don't get sick, and do not, and not just in clinical trials, but also in the real world. In August of 2021, she said the following, literally only five months later. Reports from our international colleagues, including Israel, incre show increasing risk of severe disease among those who are vaccinated early. Given this body of evidence, we are concerned that the current strong protections against severe infection, hospitalization, and death could decrease in the months ahead, especially among those who are at higher risk or those who are vaccinated earlier during the phases of our vaccination rollout. Our chief scientist, our commander-in-chief, President Biden, said the following. We must protect the vaccinated from the unvaccinated. I want you to think about that. It makes no sense. So the logical fallacy that vaccinations can reduce spread and therefore the authority should mandate it falls flat on its face. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is uh, Sharon Houck. I've been a resident of Jackson my whole life. And I don't believe government should be involved in our health care. I'm for freedom, not tyranny, regarding this resolution 102127. I work at a doctor's office with predominantly elder patients. And someone calls every day and has symptoms of COVID. And we ask them to get tested. And they say, I can have COVID. I've been vaccinated twice and I've had the booster as well. And then they test and, and they test positive. So taxpayers who work hard for the American dream can't have this dream if we're forced to take a vaccine and wear a mask. I think each individual should do their own research themselves and have the freedom to make their own decisions regarding their health choices, whether or not they need to take the vaccine. Again, I don't think government should be involved in our health care. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nicole Melton. My family lives, works, and attends school in Jackson County. Today, the Jackson County ISD informed parents that the JCISD Torrent Center, K-25, and the Torrent ECDD will be moving to remote learning starting tomorrow through the 1st of November. This is a result of short 
staffing due to COVID-19. Parents who have children in this school have less than 24 hours to find accommodations for these children. This is also not an isolated event. Last week, Springport Elementary had to go virtual as well for the same reasons. Our community is already suffering from staffing shortages everywhere. Just last month, I had to close my cleaning company due to staffing shortages. We must continue all measures necessary to help Jackson move forward and get past this virus. We cannot take steps backwards in our fight against COVID. Our health departments in Michigan have spoke with legal counsel and they have stated that commissioners cannot withhold funds this way. I hope the members of this commission will see the flaws in this resolution and choose to not support it. Voting for a resolution that is unconstitutional is a waste of everyone's time and money. Resources should not be spent on legal battles here. We need to protect our children and family and the most vulnerable mem members of our community. As elected officials, I ask that you allow our health officials to make, the make these decisions as they see fit. Thank you. My, my name is Helena Jensen. I'm 11 years old and in sixth grade this year. I go to Paragon Academies. This is the first time in 18 months I'm not forced to wear a mask. I had a lot of difficulties with the masks. First. This is the first time I'm not coming home with rashes on my face because of the masks. Not to mention, I'm missing my friends' faces and smiles. But if those masks work for you, you do you. I was always taught, my freedom doesn't start, my freedom doesn't stop where your fear begins. I'm not, I am begging you to allow my parents to make medical decisions, medical decisions for me, not my school or government. As far as vaccine passports go, even I know that's against my constitution, constitutional rights. So again, I'm begging you to allow me and my parents to make our own decisions, medical decisions, and what's best for us. I stand before you representing my parents, others, and myself, standing for all our freedoms. I want to continue to grow up in, in the free America. Not only the America I've been taught about, but love as well. Thank you for your time to listen to me and my thank you for your time to listen to me and my pleas as a young child here tonight. Peter Bournemouth, I want to address a few errors in uh, Commissioner Baer's resolution. First, the Constitution does not mention God. The rights that you have under the Constitution come from the people of the United States. The second Congress made sure that this was understood when they approved the Treaty of Tripoli, Article 11, which states the government of the United States of America is in no sense founded on the Christian religion. I want to comment on another error Mr. Blair, Blair makes. He says that we have the individual personal freedom to choose not to have a vaccine mandate. You have not had that freedom in this country since 1905. There was a smallpox epidemic in Boston. The Cambridge Health Department mandated vaccines. There was a Christian minister whose name was Jacobson who challenged that mandate. It went all the way to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court upheld that vaccine mandate. You say, well, maybe our Supreme Court now will overturn that precedent? No, they have already upheld it twice, a case where New York City's mandate was challenged and a case where Indiana University's vaccine mandate was challenged. So there's another error. You, you have not had that right to violate the public health, to expose other people to disease in this country since 1905. Finally, I want to say, you know, Commissioner Bear, you should observe some of the other commissioners. For instance, Commissioner Kennedy. I think he agrees with you on this issue. But whenever he asks a question, it's always thoughtful. 
You know, it always elucidates some information that's valuable or clears up uh, something that's uncertain. When you ask a question, you just show your ignorance. I think maybe that's why Chairman Shotwell sometimes gets frustrated with you. You know, politics is for people who have a little bit of a quick mind. Tony, your mind is barely pedestrian. 30 seconds, sir. Sometimes when I'm in the audience, it's painful to watch how slow your mind works. Thank you. Hello, my name is Melanie Kern. I'm, um, I won't give that air. <laughs> Folks, let's please be respectful of the person who's speaking at this time. Thank Ma'am. My name is Melanie Kern. I'm a resident of Jackson County all of my life, except for a few uh, years that I was away with my husband uh, during his military service. I'm a resident of Tompkins Township. I'm also the clerk in Tompkins Township for over 20 years now. And I just wanted to um, mention that when when we look at our budgets and our finances out in Tompkins, we don't have more than just our barely our one mill is what we're what we get for spending and we watch our pennies we watch our our um, dollars that go out and I just know that the county police department is stretched beyond um, what they can have capacity now my brother who lives next to a heroin house when he calls for help they come out and they say we don't have time for that we can't do anything about that why don't you have time? Because there's not enough money. But we have money to chase after mask mandates? I don't think so. And so I support protecting our God-given rights and our freedoms. And I ask you to let us citizens have the freedom to choose what is best for our bodies, our families, and our businesses. And it leads me to a little story about the frog in the pot when the water is cooking on the stove. The, you know, our freedoms are eroding and the water is getting warmer and warmer. And the frog doesn't know that he's going to die. So um, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. I feel like we're the frogs in the pots and our freedoms are eroding. And, um, and a side note, I'd also like to state that as far as the county is concerned, I do support a forensic audit of the November 2020 election, which is requested by the people. And also, um, Minard Mills Park is not in the recreation plan for the county, which is a, a park within the county of Jackson. It's not mentioned. And that's all I have. Thank you for your time. My name is Marcy Jankovich. I was born in Jackson, moved away for a while, came back when I became a very enlightened adult. Um, one size fits all medicine is not a good idea. Uh, county commissions aren't doctors. My medical decisions need to be between me and my doctor. So I don't, I don't support one size fits all medicine, whether it's max or vaccines that never even finish the stage three trials that they're supposed to finish. They're still experimental. So when we compare them to smallpox, it doesn't compare. I also wanted to um, note that Commissioner Mahoney, you're a very, very busy man. You've got a lovely family. Uh, a, a challenging job and because of that perhaps you've missed many meetings the 9-7 study session the 9-13 committee meetings the 9-16 ARPA public meeting um, you were also absent from the October 11th general government committee meeting the June 15th county commission meeting um, the 7th general government committee meeting the June 7th human services committee meeting the May 4th study committee session the April 12th human services committee meeting and the April 12th general government committee meeting in addition to um, the minutes note that you were late for the October 11 health and human services committee meeting the August 3rd study session and the 710 general government committee meeting this is not an, an indication to me that you have time to be mayor of the city of Jackson Thank you.
Hello, my name is uh, Tim Kern. I've uh, been a lifelong resident of Jackson County, living in Tompkins Township currently. And I'm just uh, here to state that I support the uh, resolution brought forth by uh, Commissioner Bear. And uh, some of the, if you look around the room, most of us here are not wearing masks. You know, as well as all you commissioners here are not wearing a mask. And why do you want to put, impose that on us uh, citizens here in America? You know, I, if people want to get a, wear a mask, let them wear a mask. If they want the vaccine, let them get it. But for us that don't want it, it, the county has re the resources can be better used, um, you know, uh, other than forcing things on uh, the American citizens here in Jackson County. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is William Hastings. I may uh, live in the city of Jackson. Um, concerning Mr. Bear. You seem like a nice enough guy to me. I don't really seem to have one major detractor in the house. Um, so it's my understanding that the commission is a divided body on this proposed resolution. There's some people who are pre pretty much completely opposed, some who are in favor, and there's some people in the middle. I'd like to speak to some of the people in the middle. I've had a chance um, over the last few weeks to see some of your statements or hear some of your statements in the press about some of your objections, possible objections to the resolution. One of them, one of them falls along the lines that this simply really isn't in the purview of this body. You have other things to do. You have better things to do, and this is just sort of like some political, um, you know, window dressing that's getting pushed on you. And I'll speak to that in a second. And another objection seemed to be somewhat along the lines that this is a constitutional matter and not to be dealt with. Um, you know, by you guys at your level doing doing your job, doing the county business. Um, so my response to that would be, um, first of all, considering you know the constitution, the constitutionality of it. Um, I, I don't think that that the constitution and the federal courts are there to save our bacon anymore. It is my view and the view of many that that the Bill of Rights has been really trampled underfoot by the Supreme Court and the federal courts for decades. So we need all hands all hands on deck at this time. And I'd also say concerning, you know, why is this even the business of the county commission? Um, I think it's important to remember that you guys up there, you're, you're doing a good job doing the, the business of the city. However, this you do not have to stand in the fire to vote in favor of this resolution. You don't have to lay it on the line. But right now across this country, there's hundreds of thousands of people. They are losing their jobs. They're losing their insurance. They're losing their ability to, 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 to feed their families. Uh, they're doing this as, as a part of a principal stand for personal liberty. So I would ask in, in support and sympathy and empathy with those people that you make a vote tonight for personal liberty. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Sue McCrellis. I'm a property owner in Summit Township. I've lived in Jackson for 71 of my 74 years. On October 8th, I emailed Commissioner Shotwell and copied all of you, stating my reasons for asking you to consider support for a resolution banning the spending of tax dollars to enforce mask vaccine mandates for Jackson County. Tonight, I would just like to share four quotes. The first is from Chairman Shotwell from a news, ta news talk broadcast on October 11, 2021. Quote, I know it's a personal choice, unquote. Next, from Southwest Airlines CEO Gary Kelly on CNBC concerning the federal vaccine mandate for companies with more than 100 employees. Quote, I'm not in favor of that. I never have been, unquote. From Delta Airlines CEO Ed Bastian when he announced ending the company's vaccine mandate for employees, noting the order had caused, quote, divisiveness, unquote. He said, quote, we're proving that you can work collaboratively with your people, trusting your people to make the right decisions and not forcing them over the loss of their jobs, unquote. And finally, from the documentation given to recipients of the Pfizer COVID booster injections. Quote, what if I decide not to get the community COVID-19 vaccine messenger RNA or the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine? Under the EUA, it is 
your choice to receive or not receive the vaccine. Should you decide not to receive it, it will not change your standard medical care, unquote. If I'm in danger of losing my job by making a decision to not receive any of the COVID-19 vaccines and thereby lose my health insurance, how does this not change my standard medical care or that of my dependents? So again, I respectfully ask you to consider support of a resolution preventing the spending of our tax dollars to enforce mandates, which are not laws, requiring vaccines or masks. Thank you. I don't really have too much to say. I just, uh, a couple of people said that I should come up and say it. I guess I know of quite a few people that have been vaccinated. And Could you state your name, ma'am? Please, Mary Walcott. Where are you from, Mary? Grass Lake. Thank I've you. I've been in Grass Lake for 57 years. Um, anyway, I've known quite a few people now that have been vaccinated and still are sick. One was hospitalized that I know of um, that had the vaccine. And then again, what about Colin Powell? He had the vaccine too, right? So. Anyway, my idea is I don't think it does much good. I got the COVID about four months ago, and I didn't get very sick. I've had a lot worse flus, and I'm 80 years old, so, and I have high blood pressure, but I was kind of in bed for two days and have no ill effects from it, and I've had a lot worse flus, and I just think this has gone way overboard. I think it's a control issue, and it's gone way overboard. And I know I got the I got the COVID from a vaccinated person. I'm sure I did. So it's just I just don't believe in the vaccines, and I don't believe in the masks. And I think it's a control issue. And I guess that's all I got to say. Hello, my name is Laura Gazdecki. I'm a Jackson County resident. I wasn't planning to come up here and talk, but I was um, motivated by the gentleman who, sorry, I was motivated by the gentleman who brought the respirator and the masks. Um, I'm a mom of a lot of children. I'm a home educator. I've also worked out of the home in um, healthcare facilities. I do understand the science. Um, I do understand um, medical lab science as well. But I wanted to speak to two things. I'm, I'm going to share with you a, a research paper, um, and I've looked it over. The paper does provide the laboratory protocol for which these masks were tested. Um, they were tested in the University of Florida laboratories. Um, a strict protocol was followed. Uh, masks of six children who attended school, uh, they were worn for at least a minimum of six hours. And these are the germs that were found in the masks. And I'm only going to list the 11 dangerous ones they found, not to mention others that cause you know, more mild uh, flu and um, other conditions. Strep pneumoniae, mycobacterium tuberculosis that causes tuberculosis, Neisseria men meningitidis, which causes meningitis, acanthamoeba polyphagia, acinobacter belmoniae, which um, does uh, cause a lot of infection in hospitalized uh, immunocompromised individuals and is highly antibiotic resistant. E. coli, Borrelia burgdorferi causes Lyme disease, Legionella pneumophila, Legionnaire's disease, Staphylococcus pyogenes, um, and Staphylococcus aureus. Um, also, um, the uh, MRSA, MRSA. So uh, these, half of these masks were contaminated with very dangerous um, bacteria. They were new masks. They weren't old masks that children wore repeatedly. And so my concern is that, I don't know how much time I have left, um, children being forced to wear these masks in school and adults having to wear these masks, as the gentleman showed, there's still air circulation. But it, it harbors, it collects a lot of these germs and um, for somebody with health conditions, as such as myself, um, hypoxic, low blood pressure, asthmatic, I have a very difficult time having a mask on for more than 10 minutes. And if I'm mandated to wear one, 
I've had adverse um, vaccine reactions since I was a young child. If I'm forced to have a vaccine, I have sick children that I would be very concerned. They have a lot of allergies and food sensitivities if they were forced to be vaccinated or if my husband, 15 seconds. my husband or myself had to lose our jobs because we refused this mask or vaccine mandate. So I ask you please not to support this mandate and to defend our freedoms. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rebecca Mayer, um, better known as Becky to some of you on the commission. I am a lifelong Jackson resident, um, formerly a director of volunteer services at Henry Ford Allegiance Health. I chose to leave there in August of 2021 due to the vaccine mandate. I wanna tell you, as an employee, I was in inside privileged information about things that go on in the hospital as a leader of that organization. I sat in my office and heard the code blues being called to employee services, employee health, for people having adverse reactions to the vaccine. I chose not to get the vaccine. I was not fired. I didn't stick around for that. I said I'm going to leave on my own volition but I have every right to determine what goes into my body and to choose whether or not I get a vaccine. I was 15 months shy of retiring from that health system. I chose to leave. And now I'm standing here before you trying to protect others who are also in that situation from having to make those difficult decisions. Not only that, I'm a licensed professional counselor. Since I've left the hospital, I do counseling out of my house. Guess what I see on a daily basis for the people in our community that are so traumatized by the lockdowns, the, the losing of their jobs, the children being masked, they can't see the expressions on people's faces. It's inhumane. We should not be putting up with this. We should not mandate that our citizens be vaccinated or masked. I was highly offended and upset when I walked. I, I live really close to the county, the Sparks uh, Cascades Park. I was highly offended when I walked there this spring and I had signs telling me which way I should walk in the park in fear of spreading COVID. <laughs> Thank God they didn't stay up very long. I urge you to please vote against mandating vaccines and masks in our county. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jeannie Brown. I worked at the hospital for 25 years. Masks don't work. It's been two years. Even on the boxes, it says not for viruses. <clears throat> The virus has an animal reservoir, so when you have an animal reservoir in a virus, it's not going away. It's being transmitted by animals. It's not going to leave. The PCR tests have been proven they're faulty and won't be used after December of this year. I have lost my job because I didn't get the shot, and there have been over 500,000 people in the world that have died from the vaccine. It doesn't stop you from getting the virus or transmitting it. I don't know why anyone would want to get it. Homeless aren't dying in the streets. They're dying in the hospitals. They're dying because people, the hospitals are giving them remdesivir, and they're going into kidney and liver failure and dying on respirators. If we... If people were dying in the streets, all these homeless would be gone by now. It's not happening. That's all I have to say. Chairman Shotwell, good evening, commissioners. Um, thank you for... Name and where, 
your name and where you're from. Okay, I was about ready to say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> my name is Jackie Leslie, and I live in Blackman Township. Mr. Snell is my representative there. Um, I want to thank all of you for serving on this board and for caring for your community. Um, until this year, I have not attended uh, board meetings for schools, townships, or the county, but I have started this year. And uh, I, I realize that I've neglected the, uh, the precious rights we have in America. I've always voted in elections, now I want to be active. I've emailed each of you regarding the resolution you will be discussing tonight and voting on. I ask that each of you support a, uh, support a ban against these possible mandates. There are many reported side effects to COVID-19 vaccinations. Among them are inflammation of the heart muscle, inflammation of the tissue surrounding the heart, and reports of miscarriages. Why would we want to force people to take COVID vaccine if they choose not to? Let it be their choice. Thank you for your time. Um, my name is Andrea Barrett and I'm from Spring Arbor Township. I want to thank Tony Barr for his resolution. I want to thank you for standing for our freedoms and I want to thank you for your wisdom. We went from a government telling us we would never mandate these vaccinations on you because it's a personal choice so you have to in order to feed your family and live as a free citizen. Because we won't let you work, earn money, feed your family, or take care of your family. That's a modern day death sentence. You take away someone's ability to work, to care for themselves and their loved ones. So what is a Christian's response to this when a governing authority says you must take this experimental jab? We must first recognize that Jesus is authority, and as such, we must answer to him. A Christian says, God tells me to show concern for the preservation of human life and to love my neighbor. What is the long-term safety data about these experimental vaccinations? The government says it's a new vaccination, but trust it, it's safe. A Christian who has allegiance to Christ, God's laws and concerns for love of neighbor will say pause. I'm not against vaccinations. Sometimes vaccinations can be great, especially when they have 50 years of safety data, showing it will not ultimately harm me or my family or my neighbors. This experimental shot has no long surf, um, safety data to show me that it is safe for my neighbors and the short term safety data is alarming and in many ways very suspicious. There is a daily report that you can go to. It's called Vaccination Adverse Event Report, known as VAERS. And this report comes from official sources. And as of last week, there were 16,310 people who died from this vaccination. There were 75,605 hospitalizations of your neighbors and mine who took this experimental shot. There were 87,814 visits to urgent care because of this jab. 1,201 or 121,305 doctor office visits for taking this vaccination. And the list goes on and on and on. My question is this, do Christians have an obligation to say something about that? Love for neighbor would demand of us that we show concern for the preservation of human life when this is being offered. But here in the United States, they say, give this to children as young as five years old in order to be able to operate in a civilized society. We never put risk on someone else. The principle of body autonomy says, no one in any circumstance will have anything forced on their body. 30 so this, seconds. So this mentality of, I took it, and I'm fine, so should you, that's not okay. The truth matters, and if you love God and neighbor enough, you will stand up and say something. This is the call. That is noble, and that is just. And I want to thank you, commissioners, for hearing me. Good evening, Russ Jennings, uh, Leone Township. Hi, commissioners and administrator. Um, I'm here today to first just come right out the gate. I am in full support of the resolution that Commissioner Bear has put together, um, especially if it does anything to reinforce the protection of county employees um, against any federal um, mandate that might come down or state mandate. I appreciate the county commissioner's work on this. Um, I know there's a lot that goes into it, and I fully support it. 
I'm here to talk about something else, though. Um, as a citizen that likes to keep track of what's going on, I suggest everybody do the same. Um, I go to the JTV Facebook page a couple of times a week because they provide the numbers from the Jackson County Health Department. And within those numbers, they just take it off the website and post it. It's easier to get through JTV. But they would simply just say, hey, there's been this many new cases since yesterday at noon till today at noon, or how many new cases there had been through the weekend. Well, now they've changed the game. And I say the game, and I do believe that the um, Human Services Committee might be interested in this if they don't already know. So today's report, for example, it says there's 20,098 positive cumulative and 233 deaths cumulative. 118 new cases since yesterday's report. But here's the new part. The Jackson County Health Department has announced a change in reporting October 6th of 2021. Cases defined as probable will be reported in cumulative case and death counts. Really? As additional methods of testing besides the PCR test have become more common, the amount of cases classified as probable has increased or included to provide more accurate picture of the disease in our community. They might as well start this with the term hickory dickory dock. That is a, <laughs> that is a riddle if I've ever seen one. It, go, it goes on. Um, it tells you how many people are in the hospital. I hope that's not cumulative. I hope that's accurate. I don't know how they can tell me they don't have an extra picture of how many deaths there are. Let's go back to deaths. Cumulative. I'm thinking since the virus started 30 seconds. 18 months ago, 232 deaths in Jackson County. There are 158,510 residents in Jackson County with 232 deaths. Somebody up there is probably better at math than me. I don't know where the percentage is with that, but to me it seems pretty low. The death rate is pretty low, as sad as 232 is. But I'm hoping that the Human Services Committee might look into the way right, they're counting the cases. Thanks. Good evening. My name is Emily Matthews. I've lived in Jackson County for 15 years. I wanted to say thank you to all of you for the time to come up and speak, to listen, learn from our community. Um, at the last meeting, Commissioner Bear mentioned we need to be proactive with our government. And I completely agree, because I believe 233 years ago, that was our founding father's plan with our Constitution, was to be proactive to protect the people from government tyranny. And that's what we're experiencing in these days that are extraordinary. Um, it's a time of awakening. We the people know every issue before us that is an issue. It's a form of tyranny and control. Money, it's where all the dots connect to. But what are the dots? A bioweapon, election fraud, blackmail, child trafficking. Does anybody talk about that? Let's mask our children. But we have children being trafficked and sold. Does anybody look into that? Research it. It's a real thing, especially in Michigan. Another dot, war, medical tyranny, and our freedoms are being stripped away in many, many other factors. We have to remember our Constitution, whether God is mentioned in it or not. Read about why he's not mentioned in it. And what our founding fathers put into place to protect us from government tyranny. This is what it is. It's tyranny, telling us what we can and cannot do to our bodies. We are here today to stand strong, to be pro proactive and support that proactiveness, to affirm what our Constitution is for, and to stand for our freedom, to choose what is best for our families and for ourselves. We have to stand against socialist, socialism, communism, Marxism, and Satanism. That are, that's all played into this tyranny. They, the indoctrination of this, these, these per, I'm going to call them perversions, have no place in our schools, no place in our city, no place in our county, 
no place in our medical establishment, and most importantly, our nation. America is one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. And I apologize if my last sentence is a little salty, but if you prefer to choose these above indoctrinations, I do believe that our borders are open. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cheryl Whitney, and I've lived in Jackson my whole life. Um, you know, when this whole thing started, I was scared. Watched everything, did this, did that. But the more I've watched, the more I've researched and heard, and different people say, the CDC is smarter than we are. They went to college. We need to listen to them. No, we don't. No, we don't. Because I'm finding out that Right along, we've had the cure for all this, and our governments have shot it down. You know, they banned the stuff that could help us che that is cheap. And I, I'm, going, I'm retired, but I'm going back to driving bus again because they need help. People aren't working because I don't know why, but anyway, so I'm going to go help them out. I have to wear a mask two, three hours at a time on a bus. I'm hard of hearing, I go into a store, I now have plastic and people with masks. You can't, I read lips. You know, I'm, and I have to take my grandkids with me to say what they say. You know, I mean, it is what it is, but I think we're all living in too much fear. Everything has been brought to us with just fear. We are in the middle of a war, a global war, not just, we're not the only city or state having this problem. It's everywhere. We need, a, we need a, has anybody seen our governor since the Pentagon thing? I haven't. You know, we, we need people to, honest people. We need people to really work for us. We need people to see the whole picture, just not straight and, let's see, just straight ahead. I mean, it, everybody has their own opinion. I'm watching my family members, a couple of them suffer from the, um, it's not even a vaccine, the, the jab. I'm watching my friend call me. What do I do? I can't give blood. Her blood, her last draw was so dark, not even normal. And I'm like, oh, dear God. So what do I, I you know, I have to call frontline doctors. Can't call anybody around here. We have policies and rules we have to follow. It's time that we all step up and start fighting for what's right. No one should be telling us what we can and cannot do as far as our body. 30 seconds. Okay, well, I think I've said it all, really, basically, right? I mean, we really need to step up. Michigan is falling behind the step up and fight board, you know? We need to really get together and do this thing because we're getting stepped on and walked out of yeah. Good evening, John Wilson, City of Jackson resident, candidate for Jackson Mayor. I just um, would like to say that if honored by the voters of the City of Jackson to be their next mayor, I will reestablish good relations between the Mayor's Office and the Jackson County Board of Commissioners, county officials, township officials, village officials because in order to benefit all of Jackson it's important that the governing bodies within the county of Jackson all work together all collaborate together for the betterment of all of Jackson thank you Hello, I'm Melissa Hiller of Jackson, Summit Township. First, I want to thank you for your time, and I'd like to encourage all of you to vote against the mandate. Between COVID itself and the controversy that surrounds it, we all have experienced loss of some degree over the last couple of years. We've seen, loss of, we've seen loss of lives, 
businesses, relationships, and more. However, we do not all share the same fear of a virus that I remind you has a 99% recovery rate. Personally, I'm not afraid of COVID as much as I am afraid of what's happening because of COVID and the rules that we now must abide by in the name of health, safety, and doing our part. I'm not saying that COVID, is, COVID isn't real or that we shouldn't be mindful, but no one should lose the ability to live freely because of a pandemic, especially when we need reminders 24 seven to even know of its existence. <laughs> Unfortunately, fear has been a tool used in order to convince us that we should be frightened of our neighbors, and I'm not. If they're afraid of me, it's still not their decision to force an unwanted medical device or procedure on me or my family. And I don't believe I should be shamed for continuing to make my own health choices. I've heard the argument it should no longer be your choice when your health affects others. I've actually used that myself when speaking out against abortion. But when it, what is truly unhealthy here is to assume that unvaccinated equals infected and to elevate the vaccinated as if they're incapable of spreading COVID, when in reality, they could still be contagious and they can still get it, yet they get to keep their jobs. And this logic is unfortunately widespread and hardly based in science. There's also a guilt campaign as if we don't care about others if we don't play along. Well, I care about others so much that I am not okay with them being forced out of a job or out of a restaurant or a business or anywhere. We're told we live in the land of the free, but these days we are far from free. And we qu we've quickly become the home of everything but the brave. Somewhere along the line, the idea of, per of personal choice has become demonized while collectivism has been promoted, even though that goes against everything America stands for. Believe me when I say my heart breaks for those who have lost loved ones, but keeping all of this in perspective, it doesn't justify <coughs> being denied the right to choose oxygen, exercise, a healthy diet and vitamins over a mask and a series of experimental injections. Please do not allow a repeat of Nuremberg. I wanna make it clear, I do not consent. I ask that you will be a voice for freedom, not for irrational fear. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Barry Malik, Summit Township. Uh, so many good comments uh, here already tonight. Um, I would say 90% uh, of them or more. Uh, a lot of wisdom, a lot of information. Um, heed and listen to them. Um, I did want to bring up a, a couple of things that haven't been mentioned yet. Um, you know, you've got uh, doctors, frontline doctors, physicians, scientists, and everybody says, listen to the experts, trust science. And that's true, we should trust science, but science involves questioning, critical thinking, uh, adverse opinions, uh, dissenting opinions, and those voices are being silenced, whether it's on YouTube or whether it's on any social media. And when you look at mainstream media, I mean, there's a machine out there. It's, it's in the ph big pharmaceutical companies, the CDC, the WHO. There, there is a machine that's operating. And you'd have to be naive to not see that. Uh, the thing that's going on is that you have people who have, uh, they're honest and very, uh, very well-informed, very well-educated experts. And, you know, a few of them would be Dr. Mike Yeadon. He was a former Pfizer VP executive. He's speaking out against this. And then you have uh, Dr. Ryan Cole, who uh, is speaking out against this. You can find him on Rumble. Uh, but uh, he's an infectious disease expert. He's talking about the side effects of this and the adverse effects that frankly are being silenced, and unfortunately by local uh, hospitals and health systems. And why is that? Because if you are working for a health system and you're an administrator, you're actually getting more money if it's coded as a, a COVID-related case. And so it's incentivizing them. I mean, they're dealing with dollars and cents, it's business, but they're telling their people by policy, you know, you don't do this. I've known people who've had adverse effects. They were in the emergency room and they were told, no, it, it, can't, be COVID, it can't be the uh, vaccine. So one last thing I want to mention is 
everybody's talking about the fear, everybody's talking about what they're afraid of, and uh, giving up your rights, your liberty for fear. And in reality, we're not being with all these public service announcements. Nobody's talking about vitamin D3. They're not talking about taking zinc. 80% of the population has a vitamin D deficiency. And most of the people who have COVID are, are, are getting sick or being hospitalized or dying because they have low vitamin D. So I think that needs to be looked at. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm Monica Day. I live in Jackson. Um, and so I guess for me the issue is, uh, you know, we haven't gotten sick. Nobody in our family has gotten sick. I don't have anyone close to me who's gotten sick. Um, and I don't want to. And we're just a few more weeks away from the vaccine being available for young kids. And I would like to exercise my liberties and allow us to protect ourselves with the vaccine. I'm not afraid of that, personally. You can call me crazy if you want. But um, we're just a few more weeks away. If there's not a mandate, if the schools can't have a mandate uh, for masks, that means that um, we can't use a piece of cloth to keep the molecules that are attached to the droplets, right? They, they, they dissipate when, there is a, when both parties are wearing a mask. It, it's not that the holes aren't small enough to catch them, right? It's part of the water vapor. Anyway, um, I sent a nice video about that um, to Tony and to um, Chairman Shotwell. That's very simple, just eight minutes about that. And it's, it's, really, it's really common sense, but if we could just find some common ground, like I can't keep my kids from going to school because we're required to send our kids to school, but maybe they could have school outside so that maybe they don't have to worry about wearing masks so that it could be an open air or just take more breaks. I mean, if we could just, there's, um, we're talking two things here, personal freedoms, okay, and personal safety, right? There's some people who are really concerned about safety and some people who are Concerned about safety, but also concerned, really concerned about their freedoms. I also cherish both, right? Freedom to me is super duper important. Personal liberties are super important, all right? But I also understand that safety is also important in our schools, and you can't just let uh, all organizations have no rules in their, in their organizations. So that's it. Um, I hope we can find some common ground and, and uh, nobody else gets sick and dies or lose their job. Thank you. Jay Horsefall, uh, Sandstone Township. Um, I just wanted to piggyback on the contractor that was up here. I'm also a contractor. Um, I've done lead work for the city of Jackson. I, I was a lead contractor for many years doing lead work for the city. Um, in order to do lead work, I had to be specifically licensed to do that, and I had to wear specific gear in order to, you know, remediate lead. Um, I know from those classes and from doing that work that I could not just put on any of these masks that anybody's out there wearing. I, I couldn't wear any of those. And I know that lead dust is a lot bigger than the virus. It does not take a whole lot of common sense to figure out where this is going. Okay, so every single mask that you see anybody out there wearing does not stop a virus from coming out of you, and it does not stop a virus from going into you. If, if those masks that I had to wear, like if I wore any of those masks that are being worn out there right now, I would not, like, I would suck in lead dust. And again, it's bigger than virus. So that's all there is. That's all I have to say. Hi, my name is Sean Lee. I'm a lifelong Jackson resident. I currently live in Leone Township. I would just like to take a minute to remind everyone that if we do not have a mask mandate, that does not mean that you still cannot send your kids to school wearing a mask for their safety or take the vaccine. 
Those of us who choose not to wear masks or take the vaccine should not be forced to. That is not the American way. Please take this into consideration and thank you all for your service. My name is Tim Golding, Grass Lake. Um, I'm also a lead paint or lead abatement contractor, and he's absolutely right. The mask people wear do not stop viruses. Um, there's been a lot of arguments on both sides um, of the issue, pro and con. Um, but when it comes right down to it, our medical choices should be our freedom to choose what we do to our own bodies, not to be dictated by the government. The argument of my body, my choice has worked for a long time for the left, and I think it should work for us in this instance as well. I ask you to vote yes on the resolution, and please don't waste any county money enforcing mandates for masks or vaccines. Thank you. My name is James Minnick and I'm from Columbia Township. Um, I've lived in this county my whole life. I've probably only been out of it, out of it a handful of months. I was born at the old Foot East building, uh, or Foot West, whatever it was called way back when. At any rate, um, I want to kind of go at this from a different angle. And everybody has said everything uh, almost that you could probably say on this. Um, at any rate, when that woman said we do not consent, you almost in this day and age have to make that announcement because if anybody knows anything about administrative governance or how we're run, our country and we are run by compulsory implied consent. Sir, you're speaking to the commission. We are, sorry, I apologize. We are, we are governed by compulsory implied consent. Um, what that means, and I wrote this really cool illustration, I wish I had my white whiteboard up, but uh, so this is the 160,000 people that elect these nine people. This is the administrator and the boards that serve underneath them, which, you know, the airport board and some of those. What they come up with is, is how the departments that they oversee are going to function. And then that becomes their directives and their operations, and then they come back and report to you guys and ask for more budgeting and or whatever happens. Now, when these groups, and some of them include the Center for Family Health and in other branches or in other uh, forms of governance, it might be the Michigan health and human services at any rate when those people start making rules and laws or, or directives or mandates that bypass me and these nine elected officials that we elected there's something wrong with that so having said all of that because that kind of just sets up my four corners of the of the precedent here is this this resolution is just you guys standing up for us against the administrative and the uh, wherever my illustration went those other those other groups of people that can't tell us what to do so I just ask that you please pass this resolution and I thank you for your service as well all of you Hello, my name is Jennifer Bittinger. I'm from Jackson, and I am wanting to say that we are grateful to you all for any acknowledgement of opposing the mandates that we've been talking about tonight. I'm so glad that so many before me have gone into the fallacies of the masks and the proposed vaccination and the testings and the passports that you address in the um, resolution so I don't have to go into all that. I just want to say that um, I did receive copies of both resolutions from Commissioner Baer and Commissioner Snell and I compared the two and as much as I would like to say um, I, I'm grateful for either one but I did want to verbally recognize some of the things in in Commissioner Bears that I love and wish we would say that we would want to ban the mandates not not oppose them um, I liked his revealing that it, it's because of our rights to life liberty and the pursuit of happiness we removed that um, they removed the a paragraph about our elderly residential care and their rights my father personally passed away the beginning of this year and I was not able to go see him in his last days this is something that is one of the awful things of all these things from our governor um, that he we removed the coercing of testing and quarantines on our students that has been a horrific thing um, the worst of all 
and I am not a legal person, but the paragraph that addressed the fact that our laws say that we should be prosecuting those who subject any to the deprivation of any rights shall be fined and or imprisoned. One year ago in October, our governor um, was ruled by the Supreme Court to stop. Everything she was doing was illegal. She then turned around and totally blatantly disregarded their orders. And then she turned to health departments to continue these awful things. Um, and they have, without any legal authority, they have continued to influence and coerce businesses and individuals with these practices. Um, our trust in news media, our medical and health agencies, and those in our government that do not stand for God's truths and constitutional laws has been destroyed. Um, we are thankful that 30, our... 30 seconds, ma'am. Okay, please help us begin to reestablish that trust by passing the resolution to stand against these mandates. Thank you. Hi, my name is Joanne Anastasiades. I'm in full support of the resolution. Um, I believe in our freedom to choose whether we wear a mask, whether we don't wear a mask, whether we get the vaccination, whether we don't get the vaccination. I am not in support of passports. I think it's nobody's business whether I'm vaccinated or not. Um, my medical decision is should be my private matter. And I believe that by passing this resolution is going to say a statement in general. I understand that a lot of these things cannot be enforced when it comes down through, but I think just making that statement would be enough. Anyways, one of the things that I question a lot is in a 12-month period, heart disease, stroke is still the number one cause of death in the United States. Not COVID. COVID has a survival rate of 99.8%. I still ask, why are we acting like this is the bionic plague? Because the reality of it is, it's not. Until I start seeing people dying in the middle of the streets and piling up and b bodies burning, then maybe I would probably take it a little seriously. Um, I lost people to the disease, but they were probably going to die from pneumonia or another illness. One, this is just um, statistics. One American dies every 36 seconds from cardiovascular disease. One in four deaths, number one leading cause of death. 800,000 strokes per year. 18 million adults with coronary artery disease. 800,000 heart attacks. That's all I have. Hi, I'm Howard Stoll from Henrietta Township. I um, just want to give you a little story. 1970, I went in the Army. Basic training. Every week we were marched down to get different shots. They'd line us up and run us all through. When I got out of my active duty, I uh, came home and had a problem with Crohn's disease. It was hardly heard of back then. And um, I dealt with that. And uh, a few years ago, I started getting vitiligo. That's where you lose the pigmentation in your skin. Um, so I'm dealing with that. It's worth somewhere along the line, I tried to find out get my records from the inoculations that we got. Well, all that was burned up in St. Louis in a big fire. So there's no, for Vietnam vets, there wasn't any records. I started listening to a gal named Joyce Riley. She had a radio show, The Power Hour. And um, after 9-11, she volunteered and went in with the uh, Air Force. She was a flight nurse. And uh, she gave lots and lots of shots to all the military guys went over to Desert Storm and um, 
we know about Gulf War Syndrome. I hope all you guys have heard of it. And uh, we don't know what those guys were. She said all those guys were guinea pigs because they got all kinds of shots when they went. So I think it's time to quit giving shots out like that, especially when you don't know what's in them. So thank you for your time. Anyone want to comment? My name is Alice Hatcher, and I'm from Spring Arbor Township. And we've lived there 18 years in that same house. Um, and I honor all of you that are doing your job here in the council. Thank you for doing your job here. It's very simple for me. I'm very proud of the people that know all of the legal things that they do. I'm not a legalist. I'm a retired teacher. I don't know anything about the statistics. But I meet my God in the prayer closet. And he simply said, I do not want you to get the shots. So I obey what he tells me to do. His word says, obedience is better than sacrifice. <clears throat> and he also mandates me as a believer of him, of God, of Jesus, to seek him first, Matthew 6, seek him first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. So I try to stay at peace every day with all of this, these messes going on by meeting them in my prayer closet and reading the Word of God. And I believe our forefathers did the same thing. They did a wonderful job of making up our Constitution, and we have made it a mess. The ones that are against it have made it such a, a horrible mess, and I'm sorry for that, of which we still pray. His also mandate to seek him first. And then the second commandment is to love our neighbors as we ourselves. So when the Lord told me not to, I, I don't tell people what to do. We have children that have already been forced by their work to take a shot, take a jab. So we just pray extra for our children and our grandchildren that are forced to do it because of their work and the people in our community and on our street. We still care about them because God says care about him first, obey him first, and um, all of the people around us, our neighbors, second. second. So he simplified it for me. 30 seconds, ma'am. Thank ma you very much. My name is David Hinson. I think I live in Concord Township. I can't say for sure. I will say this, that I travel a lot. I haven't changed one thing about my lifestyle. I've embraced people uh, that had the COVID, uh, had COVID. Uh, if there are things, and I will say this, that if this were a true pandemic, half of you wouldn't be here. Half of these people wouldn't be here. I've known more people that have died from suicide, drug overdoses, that have died from COVID. I will say that we do have a government now that has almost a demonic thirst for power, and they will do anything to achieve it. Um, so I echo the words of Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death. I don't care what happens. I will not wear the mask. I've been vilified. Uh, so what do I fear more than COVID? Much more, even if there were a true pandemic, is the overreach of government and the, uh, uh, just, as I said, the demonic, obsessive quest for power that uh, I despise. So uh, anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other public comment? 
Any other public comment? Public comment is now closed. <clears throat> Board of Commissioners, there are no special meetings of standing committees. We've arrived at approval of the minutes of the November, September Board of Commissioners meeting. So, so moved move to approve. Support. Motion and support. <coughs> Did you get them? Okay. Any questions? Comments? Corrections? Or deletions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carried unanimously. We arrived at the consent agenda. Entertain a motion? Move to approve. Have a motion from Snell, support from Commissioner Duckham. Any items for removal? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, could you please post the vote? Yes, Mr. Consent calendar has passed unanimously. We've arrived at standing committees. Standing committees, public safety and transportation, chaired by Vice Chairman Corey Kennedy. Commissioner Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have no business. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Standing committee, general government, chaired by Phil Duckham. Commissioner Duckham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We also have no business to conduct tonight. Standing Committee Human Services, chaired by Commissioner Earl Pulaski. Commissioner Pulaski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All of our items were handled in the consent agenda. We have nothing further. Thank you, sir. Unfinished business. Seeing or hearing none, we've arrived at new, new business. We've arrived at COVID Resolution 10-21-27. I'm looking for a motion to start discussion. Support. Moved by Commissioner Duckham, supported by Commissioner Kennedy. Commissioners. Start with Commissioner Snell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I've thought long and hard on this resolution, and, um, and I did make some changes to it noting that there are certain things that we can and cannot do. Really, we can't ban anything. Uh, we can oppose it, and I strongly oppose the mandates that are coming at us and that, that we're uh, facing. Um, so I'll certainly be voting yes on this. Commissioner Williams. Mr. Chair, I just, I'll be very brief. Um, so I'm, I'm all in favor for people making their own choices. My only question to this resolution is, haven't we already, um, in previous decisions, um, reinforced our thoughts and ideas in terms of expenditures and things of that nature? Administrator Overton, could you answer, please? We passed a resolution last year in June, but um, this resolution here uh, is a little more broad uh, than that resolution. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Duckham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just going back in my memory banks here, and I remember about a year and a half ago, we were told to wear a mask for 15 days and, and do some six foot spacing and all that for 15 days to slow the curve down we're a year and a half down the road now and the crazy ride's got to end uh, I got the jab because uh, I travel a lot and uh, I had two business partners that did have COVID and I was the last guy standing so I got the uh, got the jab at their request but it's my decision okay it's my decision I wish I hadn't have but I did it. I've got a daughter that uh, had her credentials all pulled that worked at Henry Ford Hospital because she refused to get the jab. Uh, so, you know, it's just, we are so crazy upside down, out of bounds as government. Yes, I support the, the mandate, or the resolution. I will be voting on it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Before we vote, any other commissioners? Commissioner Bear. Yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot recently, and one thought came to my mind that uh, maybe I titled this resolution wrong. Maybe it should have been res Resolution to Restore Liberty and Freedom to Jackson County. Yeah. Although various provisions of this resolution all relate back to that, liberty and freedom person's individual right to self-determination, opposing government mandates on what we can do, uh, government mandates, think back to uh, 1930 Germany, the mandates, show us your papers or you can't go anywhere. Uh, look back to 19... 50s and 60s in Russia, how citizens were, rights were totally squashed. Um, it's a resolution to restore freedom and liberty in Jackson County. Um, some people have said the government has mandated many things for us, um, such as uh, mandating we have a driver's license. Well, a driver's license is not in the Constitution as a guaranteed protection. The, uh, our Bill of Rights declared that we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And uh, liberty needs to be restored in Jackson County. Um, some people fall back on the argument it's the government's responsibility to protect public safety and public health. Well, that theory has been abused over history so many years, so many places. It's being abused right here in America. If the government thinks they can get away with mandating based on a public health criteria in somebody's mind, they think it's a public health issue so they can mandate a vaccine. Well, if they think it's a and this is where people have proposed this and fortunately have thus far failed. If they think our, our firearms are a public safety, um, they'll take those away. So sta stating that the government's excuse is, well, this is for public safety, uh, that's going down a very dangerous path. Um, what someone concerns public safety uh, somebody else says, no, that's my right, that's my liberty. I can do that if I choose. Um, the disease is, uh, COVID's 99.8% survivable um, even before the vaccine came along. Uh, vaccine doesn't protect people. Uh, Colin Powell was v fully vaccinated. He died a day or two ago. Um, we had to develop a new word that I had never used, never heard of before, of uh, breakthrough cases, which defines people who have the vaccine, they've been fully vaccinated, yet they still come down with COVID. Uh, so we came up with a new term, it's a breakthrough COVID sickness. Um, too many of the government mandates are just uh, reprehensible. Uh, we need to shut them down. I will be voting in favor of this resolution. Commissioner Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I believe in personal choice, um, and one of the reasons I like this resolution and I like some of the language that was added is that the county will still continue to provide vaccine to those who want them. Okay, that's not being taken away, and there was some misinformation going around for a while, but that's what we were trying to do. And that's not what we're trying to do. But when it comes to personal health, it's a personal decision. And I'll always stand for, for personal rights. And, I, and I'm going to speak to that. Some people have said, well, why do you feel that it's unconstitutional? And I'm going to tell you why. The First Amendment speaks to religion, right? We all know that this 
all three forms now, in some way or another, have fetal matter that has been used to make the vaccine. There, there are plenty of religions, primarily Christian, um, but others as well, uh, that that's a sin, and they do not want to do that. And no one should be forced to put something in their body they don't want to, especially in America, where we have the First Amendment to pr protect our religious rights. Secondly, the Fourteenth Amendment, which is the right to due process. And I hear so many of you tonight talking about so many of the things that have happened, the breakthrough cases, the side effects. And I'm not saying that the vaccine, that everybody has side effects, but some people do, right? Um, we don't have a large enough sample group, in my opinion. You don't hear any of these experts talk about p-values. And anybody that's been involved in science or statistics knows that a p-value has to be below 0.02 for it to be statistically correct, all right? So, <clears throat> for me, this really speaks to, to the 14th Amendment. You're not getting due process if you're being told you have to do this, and these concerns aren't being addressed adequately for your mind. So that's my reason. I'm going to support this 100%, uh, and that's all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other commissioners? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, could you post the vote, please? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Measure passes 7-2. Move on to the apportionment report. Administrator Overton. I would, I'm looking for Anthony. Where is Anthony? Right there. Where is he? Oh, there he is. <laughs> well, I have a much more boring issue for you. Um, so, my name is Anthony. I'm the president and owner of Assessing Solutions. We're helping out with the transition of the equalization department right now. Part of one of the things that we had to take care of for you guys was your apportionment report. Um, the apportionment report, uh, what that does is that summarizes, see he doesn't even want to hear what I have to say about the apportionment report. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, what the apportionment report does is it summarizes all the millage rates that are going to be levied throughout the uh, county, okay? Um, and in order for those millage rates to be levied, those have to be approved by the board. Uh, but the board is required to have an equalization director to make sure that these millage rates have been appropriately reduced by all the appropriate millage reduction fractions. And uh, so that's what we did. Uh, we verified that the millage reduction fractions had been appropriately applied. I can wait. Um, we made sure that they had been applied appropriately and that we had summarized them in the apportionment report that you have in front of you. So if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. What we're looking for is approval of the apportionment report so that everybody can levy their taxes. I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion in support. I have a couple questions. Sure. Um, I'm looking at City of Jackson Ren Zone, Blackman Township Ren Zone. Um, those are red. Are those deductions from the base value or just from the value of that property for uh, as far as the equalization? Yeah, no. So they're not a reduction of value. They just uh, are only certain millage rates apply to them. So like if you're looking at City of Jackson, um, of the 19.245 mills, only 1.25 get applied to that run zone, so they pay they pay less less of those millage rates um, that get applied. And are those the only two run zones we've got that I saw? Uh, you have Blackman, and you also have a run zone in Hanover, uh, and you have one in uh, Leone. 
And those are redevelopments that we did within those boundaries, correct? That's correct, yep. Further questions? Should be in front of you or coming that way. Apportionment report passed 9 0. Thank you. Thank you, folks. We've arrived at the second opportunity for public comment. Each individual will state their name and have two minutes. To address the board, you may only address the board once under this public comment opportunity. You may not yield your time to others. Board members will not debate nor answer questions at this time. Second public comment. Good evening, I'm Stephanie Riley. I have lived in Jackson since 1982. Worked at uh, Foot Hospital, Legion's Hospital, Henry Ford Hospital for 36 years. I wanna thank you for doing this because I did lose my job and I think it needs to be stopped and I appreciate all of you that voted for this. Thank you. You allow um, comments from like, I'm reading for somebody who didn't feel comfortable being here. Um, okay, uh, his name, um, this is from John Ortega, um, and he was um, writing to strongly encourage you to vote no on the resolution. Um, passing the resolution will weaken the authority of school districts in our county to determine what's best for the health and well-being of their students and staff during a global pandemic that's taken the lives of more than 21,000 Michiganders, more than 725,000 Americans, and more than 4.5 million people worldwide. Um, I've been a resident of Jackson County since 2004 um, after moving here from the greater Los Angeles region with my wife and our two children. Um, he goes on to talk about um, the reasons why they moved here and um, their affection for the place. Um, and, uh, but I'm going to skip to the part that says, um, if a school district in Jackson County thinks it's best for its students and staff to wear facial coverings during the school day, it should be allowed to make that determination and students should be required to abide by that decision. There shouldn't be a resolution on the books that will effectively undermine the school district's ability to protect the health and well-being of its students and staff. For those who are opposed to their children being required to wear a mask to school because they claim it infringes upon their child's personal freedom, I'd encourage them to think about the economic future of Jackson County. Um, the county has a reputation for being backward and tethered to the past rather than open to looking to the future. And a resolution that prohibits school districts from having the right Second. to require their students and staff to wear masks for the sake of each other's health and safety during a global pandemic would be another reason for most, if not all, science-based companies to choose to locate their businesses elsewhere. It would make little sense for these businesses, many of which offer high-paying jobs to operate in a community in which it would appear science is not valued. Thanks. Good evening. Roger Downey from Columbia Township. I want to first uh, thank all of you uh, board members for all the work that you do. And I'll single out Mr. Bear and Mr. Mahoney, uh, especially uh, for the work that uh, you do on the committee. Uh, I'd also like to thank everybody for the uh, seven to two vote that was uh, handed out here. I think it's uh, more than fair to let people know that they have the freedom to choose the parents have the freedom to choose if they want their kids to wear masks. They have the freedom to choose if please, they want to wear masks. Please respect the speaker. Pardon? I'm asking the audience to respect the speaker. Well, thank you. And I want to thank everybody for, uh, I've lost my train, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, thank you very much, and I'm uh, glad that uh, everybody here was here tonight. Uh, and we had a good vote. Thank you. Hi, Brittany Senecal. I live in Napoleon Township. 
Um, I just want to say I'm very disappointed <laughs> with the vote that just happened for the resolution. Um, it did seem like there was a general consensus that everyone agrees that we need um, possibly more funding, more resources for those that are depressed, suicide, drug overdoses. So I hope to see some resolutions and things brought forward for those types of causes. Less money for fountains, <coughs> golf courses, things like that. Thank you. Hi, Kelly Bowen again. I just want to say thank you so much. And I want to make a bold statement and announce, proclaim this county of Jackson back to the most high tonight, where two or more are gathered in his name, and we ask him to come back over the county of Jackson. Thank you. Amen. Hi, real quickly, thank you so much. This is awesome that you're standing for us, we the people, Jennifer Bittinger. Thank you. And thank you so much. Um, I did want to, I didn't fit into my last one, though. Two things that I'm concerned about, because you're involved with the health department for our county, you continue to provide the services of the shot, which is not a vaccine, it's an experiment. I understand that. With providing that, I really wish there could be some way to make sure that everyone knows that's volunteering to put those that stuff into their body, that they know the consequences of it and quarantine themselves for a short period of time because they are the ones that actually are spreading, continuing year, you know, year and a half out, we're still spreading it to each other from the constant putting it into the bodies. So if there's some way we could educate people more on that and also, I looked on myself, uh, looked myself at the CDC and different agencies that talk about the um, the the shot. There is, you have to go real, real deep into the website. This, take this, take this, go before you actually see that there have been deaths involved in this, and then there have been major heart problems, major things. All, the only thing it says on anything that just casually looks to see about the shot is you might get an allergy or you might have a sore spot. This this is of great concern and this needs to be more made well more well known to our citizens. Thank you very much. I'm Barry Malik, uh, Summit Township. I uh, just wanted to say thank you to those uh, of you who voted to support this. And uh, I respect and appreciate each one of you for your service, uh, even uh, those who I uh, would disagree with at times. Thank you. Any other public comment? <clears throat> yes, Tony? I, I would ask that you read it under commissioner comments, please, and recognize it, please. Yep. When we get to commissioner comments. Yes, sir. Any other public comment? Any other public comment? Alice Hatcher. Um, Spring Arbor Township. Um, uh, it just came to me as the, one of the last women was speaking. Um, a pastor in um, Florida has already told his congregation that if they know anybody, this is the, under the warning issue of the man of the um, if anybody's going to take the shots, that it should be a part of whoever is trying to hand out the pokes, <laughs> it should be mandated, it should be part of, the, not, part of their um, total knowledge given to the people ahead of time. And I agree with that. He was saying that so many have proven that they've gotten sick after the shots or, or pokes or after the, the second poke or after that, there have been very people very ill and have increased 
increased illness in young and old afterwards. So there's, there's more and more information that's been out there. And he's asking his congregation or anybody that wants to come, he's I'm not saying you can't come to my church, but he's saying to them, please stay away for three weeks at least after you get the poke to protect. He's a good shepherd and he's trying to protect his flock. Thank you very much. Any other public comment? Any other public comment? The second public comment is now closed. We've arrived at commissioner comments. Commissioner Baer, are you ready? No, I'm still looking for his email. <laughs> Any other commissioner comments? Commissioner Walls? Yes, I'd uh, <clears throat> very much like to thank the audience here for coming and joining us tonight. You've brought to light a lot of inspirational, heartfelt comments, and we appreciate that. Not too often do we always see people come out and join our, join our uh, commission meetings and be a, a big part helping us make the right decisions for that. I thank you. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Duckham? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, too, would like uh, to thank everybody for showing up. I, I wish the people that left, I know we're down to one elevator and they wanted to get out of here. I know why they left early, but uh, thank you for showing up. I'd like to also thank my Republican committee members here that voted yes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Mr. Pulaski. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I um, appreciate the opportunity to make comments here. Um, as uh, commissioners are aware, I had my trepidations about this resolution. I appreciate the work that's been done by our legal counsel and by the administration and by the authors uh, to arrive at one that I uh, felt I could uh, vote for in reasonable conscience. Um, I will say <clears throat> that in the first recital, where to be, uh, where I am reminded that I've taken an oath to the, to uphold the Constitution, is superfluous, redundant, and a little bit insulting. And um, I, I guess I want to make sure that. Um, Everybody up here has taken an oath. I think uh, Madam Clerk has them all on file. And to be reminded of it in a resolution is, um, as I've noted, um, upsetting to me. I, I hope that if a day comes when this commission or any other government needs to act to protect public safety and public health, will act with the same ardor as we have uh, adopted this resolution and with the same speed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other commissioners? You ready, Mr. Bear? Yes, thank you, Chairman. I have to apologize to John Roby. I cannot find his email right now. Uh, okay, we will forward it to commissioners to be shared with them. Do you have something you'd like to say, sir? Yes, I appreciate the uh, big turnout tonight. It's uh, it's helpful to me to see that uh, our efforts were appreciated. Um, so I appreciate all of you taking the time out of your days to come here and share your opinions. Thank you. Seeing no other commissioner comments. Mr. Me. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Okay. I'd just like to thank everybody coming out tonight. I don't see her out here, and I'm, it's a shame she wasn't, but uh, I'd like to recognize, I believe her name was Elena Jennison. Uh, I apologize if it's wrong, but that was the young lady, the, the student, that got up and spoke. And that took a lot of bravery, and it, and it really touched my heart tonight, so I wanted to give her a shout-out.
Any other commissioner comments? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I I know we don't usually uh, respond, but there is uh, uh, remarks said that because of what we've done, it may not uh, we may be penalized by companies not wanting to be here. And I would remind the board that our governor, who was for mandates in the beginning, couldn't land Ford Motor Company here, and it's several billion dollars worth of uh, investment. So. Um, I don't think that matters one way or another. I think things like having the highest energy costs in the Great Lakes region, the highest labor costs in the Great Lakes region, I would think those are more reasons that uh, Michigan has a hard time attracting uh, more businesses here. Thank you. Any other commissioner comments? Try it again. We have no closed session. Entertain a motion to adjourn. I have a motion in support. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Duly carried.